picking up with the last step of energy generation and now we are again going to do the electron transport chain. So we finished the glycolysis which would be way out here somewhere in the cytoplasm where we took apart glucose and then we imported into the matrix of the mitochondria and we um, did the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle where we ripped apart those two carbons that ended up coming in as acetyl-CoA and we um, released CO2. I remember every time we broke a bond we created some FADH. I'm sorry, NADH. NADH is an energy carrier. It's going to carry the electrons. So every time that NADH comes into the inner membrane or the cristae of the mitochondria, it drops off a little bit of energy and a hydrogen. And some of these members of the electron transport chain, three of them in particular, can pump a hydrogen across the membrane. So this is going into that little bit of space, the inner membrane space between the inner fold and the outer membrane of the mitochondria. We're pumping hydrogens. Um, the electron reduces this protein. And then it reduces the next, um, this is actually a lipid next to it called quinone. The lipid is very fluid. It gets reduced with that electron that got dropped off. Let's follow the same electron. That electron drops off its energy at the next transmembrane protein, which when it gets reduced, pumps a hydrogen across. Hydrogens are just hanging out in the matrix here. And then the energy gets transferred to a, a protein called cytochrome C, which is actually on the other side of the membrane. It's a peripheral protein. That peripheral protein has an iron in the center of it. The iron gets reduced and then it goes and it moves its energy over to this last proton pump, hydrogen pump. Again, that protein gets reduced and that happens, it pumps hydrogen across. This protein also has an enzyme function attached to it where it splits, I'm sorry, it takes um, two hydrogens and some oxygen and makes hydrogen, or uh, makes water. This is the reason we need to breathe oxygen. We need to, oxygen is called the final electron acceptor and it is going to get reduced to water. Water just will diffuse through the cell. So we created that hydrogen ion gradient. We built it up in the inner membrane space. And now anytime you have a gradient and if you open up a channel to allow passage of that ion, we can now do some work. We can allow those hydrogens to go down their gradient, go where there's fewer of them, and then we can turn ADP into ATP. And this is actually, um, they, they call it a mechanical enzyme. And I thought that I moved my slide from before. Here it is. Um, we looked at this before. This is the enzyme ATP synthase that we're talking about that makes ATP. Hydrogen ions are built up over here. They flow down the tunnel that's made by that uh, transmembrane protein and it's associated with these other um, enzymes that actually move. This is called a mechanical enzyme. Every time that moves it makes a um, an ATP. So then going back to where we are. Oops. Back to where we are. All the way down here. We covered a lot of ground. Okay, so this is what's happening in the inner membrane. This is called the electron transport chain. So let's look at exactly what the electron transport chain is made up of. So like I said, it's made up of these different proteins and they're in different complexes. This is a scale that has the amount of free energy available. And then this is down here at the bottom, oxygen is our final electron acceptor. So this is showing you that the energy comes in at pretty high level in the NADH and then it's used to slowly siphon off the energy and as it does that different um, molecules are at a slightly lower um, reduction potential so they will get reduced and then finally the oxygen receives that last bit of electrons and is the final electron acceptor. Um, so this is a complex and notice the presence of these irons and then uh, cytochromes have iron in them. This cytochrome has iron in it. This cytochrome has iron in it. This one has iron in it. Iron turns out to be the molecule that's be, or the atom that's being oxidized and reduced. Um, it's also the reason why the mitochondria has a lot of color to it. If you saw a real mitochondria, it's actually got a lot of a reddish look to it, almost like um, blood, as that's the iron gives blood its color as well, the heme group. So NADH is going to drop off its energy at this energy level. Remember, this complex gets reduced and pumps a hydrogen across the membrane. Then we have quinone, which is a lipid 
you don't have to remember these names so much. It gets reduced, it transfers its energy and reduces this series, which also can be a hydrogen ion pump, which reduces this protein, which is on the inner membrane space, which transfers its energy to the final pump, which also is the enzyme that um, reduces oxygen to water. I mentioned FADH2 is worth a little bit less energy. Notice it drops off its energy to pump hydrogens at one step down, so it misses this first complex because it's actually worth a little less. See, this is at 40-something, this is at 50-something. That FADH2 has a little less energy associated with it. Just to see it one more time, this is the version that's in your textbook. So this is the cytoplasm, outer membrane, inner membrane, and this is the matrix. So the citric acid cycle happens here. We make our NADH and our FADH2 right here. Those diffuse over to the membrane, drop off their energy, pump a hydrogen. Reduce the next guy next to it. Reduce this guy, pump a hydrogen. Reduce this guy, reduce this guy, pump off a hydrogen. Now we have the hydrogen gradient goes down ATP synthase. And here's where we make um, the oxygen into water. If you, for some reason, are not breathing and have no oxygen, this all blocks up, stop making ATP because you stop making a gradient. If you inhale a lot of carbon monoxide instead of oxygen, carbon monoxide also will bind the hemoglobin in your blood. Carbon monoxide will get into your cells. Carbon monoxide will block this. It's an inhibitor of these. You uh, might have heard about cyanide. Cyanide poisoning kills you because it blocks this hydrogen ion pump right here. Cyanide poisoning basically poisons all your mitochondria you die because you can't make any ATP. So this is the electron transport chain. This is also called oxidative phosphorylation because we are adding phosphates with this ATP synthase molecule. Um, don't think I want that picture. So what happens if you don't have oxygen? So if you are um, a human and you are overdoing it, and you um, are using your muscles so much and making lots of ATP, and you run out of oxygen. Um, maybe you've just done the run of your life, a marathon, and you've got this intense pain. You have an intense pain because lactic acid is building up. So if you run out of oxygen, your cells try to go into a survival mode where they make a little bit of ATP. They make a little bit of ATP by continuing glycolysis. Remember glycolysis, we put in a few ATP, we get out two ATP. Well, if you don't have oxygen, you won't do the rest of the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain because everything starts backing up because you're not recycling your NADs, right? In the electron transport chain, you are, you are dropping off your NADH and making NAD+. Then your NAD+, is going to go back over here and keep working. So if you're not breathing air and you have no oxygen coming in, you want to recycle your NADHs into NADs to make this keep going. So one way that we've evolved to do that is to turn our pyruvate in the cytoplasm into lactic acid. Notice pyruvate has one, two, three carbons. Citric, our lactic acid also has three carbons, but you change this oxygen here. That's where the energy goes to uh, to regenerate the NADs. Lactic acid is the stuff that makes your muscles burn. Lactic acid has to be taken away by your bloodstream and then processed in your liver um, so that you can recover. And hopefully you start breathing again and then you'll survive. We don't survive for very long like that because we only make two ATPs. If you do the whole electron transport thing, you make about 36 ATPs. So there are some organisms called facultative anaerobes. I'm just going to move down one more. Um, like yeast. And um, we can force yeast to survive without oxygen. And they're single-celled organisms. They're not very big. They don't need a lot of energy. They can survive on just a couple of ATPs. They grow a little slower. So they do glycolysis, make some ATP, make NADH. We need to recycle that NADH to NAD to keep this loop going. They take their pyruvate, and they do a process with an enzyme called pyruvate decarboxylase, which removes the CO2 and makes um, acetyl aldehyde, and then that molecule gets um, reduced by the NADH into ethanol. This is the ethanol that you find in beer and wine and, and vodka and any kind of alcohol. Basically, the yeast is using the sugar for glycolysis and then taking the pyruvate and recycling the NADHs so that it can continue to make energy 
and one of the byproducts happens to be CO2 and ethanol. So if you cap um, basically some sugars with some yeast, you'll make a bubbly um, drink with ethanol in it, bubbles from the CO2, the ethanol will be in there, and that would be basically beer or champagne. Wine is basically you let the CO2 evaporate off. Just lastly, um, there's other ways of feeding into this energy generation pathway. So glycolysis starts with glucose, but what if um, you don't have a steady supply of glucose? Well, you could bring in some amino acids right here in this step in glycolysis and um, turn it into pyruvate and then into acetyl-CoA and then still generate some energy. Not very efficient. You're probably going to also feed your amino acids into some parts of this, um, parts of the Krebs cycle. Again, not very efficient. Proteins are um, our last choice of trying to generate some energy. Again, if you don't have glucose around, you don't want to really use up your proteins, we store our energy as fats. Remember, fatty acids are long chains of carbons and hydrogen. Well, what is acetyl-CoA? The acetyl group is simply carbons and hydrogens. So the fatty acids kind of feed in right here, two carbons at a time. So if you have an 18 carbon long fatty acid chain, you can run the citric acid cycle nine times. Nine times two is 18. And we could generate a lot of NADH going to the electron transport chain and making a lot of ATP. So we, we can use up almost all of our macromolecules some way or another to continue to generate energy for ourselves, Our method of choice is glucose, and the second method of choice is our storage units, those fatty acids, to rip them apart and make energy.